They've won 12 in a row, only three short of their record of 15, which was set in 1981. This year, the Blues, too, have gone from strength to strength, winning their last three after going down to the Hawks in round one. Tonight, we begin our replay at the start of the final term. Carlton is leading by the narrow margin of seven points, and with me in the commentary box is Lou Richards. Seven's big league, the final quarter of our match of the day from VFL Park. Over 67,000 fans here, Carlton lead, but only by seven points. They're against the breeze in this final term. Dean, short kick marked by Glenn Hawker. Hawker, a most consistent player right throughout the afternoon. Spiral punt kick down to the half-forward line for Essendon. Underneath it, Danaher got too far underneath it, actually, in the mark. Let's see who's got it down there. Might be Shine. Yes, it is. And Brad Shine takes the mark. Brings the play towards the member stand flank, trying to find Madden or Blackwell. Blackwell takes the mark, this time in front of Jeff Raines, who played a slashing second quarter, but I thought Bradley got on top during the third term. Been a good battle between those two. Simon Madden, one hand to it, at the back of the pack. Motley, Walsh, doesn't let him go, he's got him by the arm. Still gets his kick in, and it's not a bad one either, down towards McClure and Folds, who pushes him. Hunter, moves to the forward line after half-time, shoots and goal! Beautiful bit of play on the part of Mark McClure. Tapped it back beautifully to Hunter. You watch it in replay again. 7 11 to 6 4. Carlton by 13. Great play on the part of McClure. Motley was grabbed. It could have been holding the ball against him. Then watch McClure tap that back. Hunter anticipating a magnificent pickup. Rubbed it along the ground to make sure of it. And that's given Carlton the chance. So uh, quickly in the at, uh, last quarter, Peter. Carlton's first goal at the small scoreboard end. One and a half minutes into the final quarter. It's the Blues by 13 points at our match of the day. Can they upset the league leaders and reigning premiers? Once again for Essendon, Glenn Hawker. Left centre wing, up to half forward, or Madden slipped, not Madden, but Merritt slipped over at the crucial moment, and the mark is taken by Meldrum, who's played a very good game this afternoon. Did he slip or was he pushed? I think he slipped. Meldrum gets a 15 metre penalty. Game certainly picked up a pace after half time when we had only seven goals scored before the main break. Meldrum, short of centre field, straight down the ground. That's the way to play it. The two Maddens there, punched away by uh, Walsh, it was. Picked up for Essendon by Phillips. Phillips's kick is a short one, and the mark again taken by Shine at the right halfback flank. Well, that was a very handy goal kicked by Hunter right across the ground at centre field, grabbed by Aspen. He's in trouble, got a hurried kick. He's off balance back towards Williams, and uh, Mark Thompson picked up again by Bradley. Over it goes to Kenny, back to Hunter. Hunter spins out of the pack, he goes down, tries to get it back to row, but he fumbled. The ball knocked back, Waterson comes in, gets a hurried kick out wide. Mark Thompson going after it, but as the racehorse, Hazard picks it up at half forward. Over to Mark Thompson, he runs into row, Dorrit, it back to Hazard again. This could be dangerous, this could be a goal coming up. He fires, he's put it through for a goal. Magnificent play by Hazard, great play. Great play. Seven goals, 11-53, Carlton to Western, 7-4-46. Well, they tried to stop him, they just couldn't. They weren't, couldn't they? Well, he shows a ton of pace here, gave it to Thompson, nearly cop one from Dorrich. I think he put him off balance a bit, but he still got it to Wizard. Fumble, gets around Dill beautifully, then fumbled again. But that shows you the brilliance of this little champion, Robo, and kicked a goal. Magnificent play. Set of bounce again. Four, seven points the difference, so the Blues bouncing back. Knocked out by uh, Justin Madden, grabbed here by Williams. And these little blokes are sending the Bombers back into attack again. How it goes wide towards the boundary line, it'll beat them all. And it's out of bounds, but it's in the Bombers' attacking zone. Only about uh, 60 metres around from their goal. Seven points the difference, and this has been a top-class game too. Game getting better as it goes along because the ground is drying out and the players really grabbing the ball now with a lot of confidence. Well, what happened there? The umpire let that go. He said it was six and one and a half a dozen. The other kicked off the ground by Bradley. Down goes, uh, well, they all pile in there. We see Blackwell go down. The ball pushed out. The dual pounces in the pack there. The umpire's found a free kick. Lux of fortune. It's gone to Western. It's Mark Thompson. They're trailing by seven points. He's out there at half four. He's gone for a short pass. Spencer. It'll be Spencer grabbing that one. And he's well within kicking distance. And uh, Kevin Sheed, he's got a lot of faith in this young fellow. He's going to be a real top player for the Bombers. A goal here would make the difference one point. It'll be one point the difference. He's only about uh, 25 metres out from goal. If that, directly in front. 
He kicks this goal. A lot of pressure on this young fella. Spencer comes in there. There's the kick on its way. We'll wait on the result. It's a goal. A point the difference. In the battle of the superpowers. Seven goals, 11, 53 Carlton to Western. Eight goals, four, 52. Well, Western have got two very quick goals in this term. Carlton got one, their first at the small scoreboard end. But I don't think the signs are looking good for Carlton. If they can fight their way out of this, they will do extremely well. Spencer two, Daniel had two, the leading goal kickers for Essendon. Sing singles also to Hurd, Clark and Merritt. Kevin Sheedy will be pretty happy with the way the Bombers are fighting this out. One point the difference. Who's going to get it out of the centre? Waterson, good tackle. Alvin, Bradley, Corkamilis. High ball to the power forward flank. Thompson, Ashman. Thompson gets there first. Good tackle, Ashman, holding the ball almost. Yes, it is. That's the first mistake Mark Thompson made all day. Just the same, Pete. He's been a very good player for Essendon. Ashman, after half-time, has played well. Madden and Foles in there for the Bombers. Alvin gets the crumbs. Can't pick them up. Hawker. No go. Waterson. Two on one out there in favour of the Bombers. Elshaw had the chance. He's got a second opportunity. Fires it straight to Justin Madden. Who says thanks very much. Ashman, the only one waiting down. Kick smothered off the boot. Williams, well shepherded. Gets clear. Elshaw, right centre wing for Ashman. The Bombers doing all the attacking so far. And the mark is taken. Let's see who's got it. It's Mick Thompson. Phillips at half forward. The South Australian has a shot at goal. Meldrum there for Carlton. Touched and out of bounds, is it? Yes. And so in Essendon's left forward pocket, the throw in. Six and a half minutes into the final quarter. The Bombers trail by only one point. 53 plays 52. Essendon kicking with the assistance of this fairly strong breeze. Spencer to do battle with Justin Madden. Won by Justin Madden. Only a few metres further around. And once again, it's going to be another boundary throw in. Seventh big league from VFL Park. 23 Spencer, 44 Madden. Clark was buffered out of the road by two Carlton players. It's picked up by Doric. It's marked by Hurd. Only travelled two metres, so no mark. Into the goal square. Some tall timber needed here. Alvin fumbles. Chance for Elshaw. Fires out the hand pass. Not a good one. Meldrum would be better advised to let it go over the line. He does. It's a throw. Out of bounds in that forward pocket position right against the uh, Bombers point post. A point the difference. Seven and a half minutes gone of this last quarter. Knocked out by Madden. It comes back to Meldrum. His kick is out towards uh, Road and Road takes the mark at half back. So Carlton have got to get a goal if they want to win this game because they're kicking against the breeze. He's got a 15 metre penalty. This brings him right up to the half-back line. He goes wide. Well, the pack fly now can take that mark. Going through was Corker Miller. Still has got a chance, but he fumbled. Got a kick off the ground. Still plenty of scrimmaging going on. Danaher can't pick it up, but he gets a hand pass to Simon Madden. A short pass. Out wide. It's a good one and marked by Elshaw. And it'd be about 45 metres out from goal. Perhaps a little bit longer. It'll take a good kick to get a goal, but this fellow's kicked some great goals these days. Being a rover, he won't pass, I shouldn't imagine. There it is on its way. But it's off target and scores a dead level. Eight and a half minutes gone of the last quarter. 7-11-53 Carlton to Western 8-5-53. And what a game we've had here today. This big crowd of 67,000 have enjoyed every moment of it. Ooh, well, that could be a free kick downfield for sure. I think it will be. Still, Elvin's got the mark. And he's got it short of half back. Carlton taking the long way home. They should be going direct with the goals. Tapped out by Blackwell. Back it goes that time to Kenny. They're all having a go there. I notice Thompson's there too and also Williams. And the umpire will ball it up. Still on the bomber half forward on about 75 metres out from their goal. But Carlton will insist on going around the flanks instead of giving the ball directly down the ground. Good play by Cork and Mielis. Over to Bradley. Back it goes to Blackwell. Has a chance now for Kenny to break clear. Sends the ball across to centre half forward. Coming out to meet it as Hunter. Will it bounce okay? He's too quick there for oh, Donnell grabbed him, but he's still got the ball wide. Looking there for Aspen. One on his tail is uh, Thompson, but he's clear. He's got a chance to score a goal. He fires. It's a goal. And the Blues are in front. What a game we've got here today. A goal will it for us now in favour of Carl. Their score is 8-11-59 to 8-5-53.
We've seen a whole lot of champions in Australia on NEC, Australia's champion colour TV. Seen them run, swim and fall, seen them hit, do it all. NEC, our champion colour TV. From the champs in colour TV comes a knockout selection of portables, like this handy little all-rounder. See the whole range of NEC's affordable portables at your retailer now, and you'll see why NEC is leading the field. NEC, our champion colour TV. When strong pain becomes unbearable, Veginin has the strength to combat it. For severe toothache, headache and migraine, Veginin provides relief. For the fever and pain of flu, reach for Veginin's extra strength. And to help relieve the pain of rheumatism and arthritis, Veginin's combination of aspirin and codeine is specifically formulated to relieve strong pain. Use only as directed and consult your doctor if pain persists. Veginin, victory over strong pain. The new Holden Astra has arrived. With a new 1.6, it sails up hills. That's a clever little Astra, you know what I mean? Go all the way on just one bill. With a clever little Astra, you know what I mean? There are features galore and a long hatch floor. In a clever little Astra. An automatic door and a whole lot more. What a clever little Astra, you know what I mean? The new Holden Astra. Just no match for such a clever little Monday night on Day by Day, an insight into top crime investigator, Bob Bottom. All of the material for the cost produced on that has been cut out, obviously, to discredit me. And I've challenged Neville around time and time again, but table that. Have you got that 20 pages? Well, I have typed up here now, and I'm, I'm thinking of releasing it. I, you know, the tapes that didn't exist, they told me these. These are the federal telephone taps. Also Monday, winter ills and chills, can we beat them? Find out at 7 on 7. 59 close, 53, 10 minutes into the final quarter on Seven's big league. Great goal, kicked by Ashman, taken away by Johnston. Johnston up the half forward, there he is again, marking in front of Thompson. What a great duel those two have had. Ashman looking for a 15-metre penalty, it's a play on call. Well, Motley had it and then lost it. Oh, Walsh just about caught, he is caught, holding the ball. Well, he's uh, both holding the ball and throwing the ball too, Pete. Yes, good tackle by big Justin Madden, who's not a bad kick if he can get onto it. See what he can do. I reckon he can just about kick this if he goes long. He hasn't. He's gone for a pass. Hunter at the back. Can't take it. Williams. Oh, McClure just about kicked four heads over the grandstand. Essendon free kick. No explanation needed. Gary Foles will take the free kick. Foles hasn't done a bad job down there either, but then again, he always does. I don't think I've ever seen Gary play a bad game. Short pass, Thompson, a great uh, duel with Ashman, back to Folds again, full of running from half-back, up over centre field, waiting at the back is Brad Shine. But a fair game too, Pete. He has Shine to half-forward, it's a mark, Johnston cutting loose, clear of Waterson, ball up towards Hunter, flies, mark, no! Almost, so near for Ken Hunter. Thompson nearly dragged down, gets clear, gets Essendon out of danger. Should I say yet again, dropped by Mick Thompson. Thompson from inside the square, short pass, down towards half forward, trying to find Ezard, looks for a free kick, no sir. Great play, Ezard gets clear, he's lost it again. And the stack up there at half back, holding the ball, decision going Carlton. Push on the back, Pete. Dean to take the free kick for Carlton. Dean from half back. There's up wide, the centre wing position, Bradley. Oh, he and Rains have had a great duel. There's a 15 metre penalty, or did he play on? I didn't think he played on. I think the umpire may be reporting him he, too for wasting time, time. time. Yes, he has. He's taking the pencil out now. Similar to Jimmy Jess last week. So uh, that will be probably 500 bucks out of the coffers. That seems to be the usual penalty these days. A bit silly. 68,000 feet, 151 here today. But he's got to take Bradley's number because uh, it was for wasting time against him. Couldn't do Carlton much good either. But the umpire doing his job. And the 15 metre penalty to boot, which brings him up almost to the left half forward flank. So Craig Bradley, the chance to put Carlton deep into attack. Great game of football here at VFL Park. McClure at the back. Folds. Looks for the hand pass. Knock on from Elshaw. Out it goes to Hawker. He's caught. 
Johnston down with the ball and the bounce at left half forward flank for the Blues. 13 minutes gone of this last quarter. It's a tense struggle. A goal the difference in favour of Carlton. They've got the ball on their half forward line. It'll be a ball up about uh, 55 metres out from their goal. Pressure on the uh, Bombers now as we see Waterson trying to get clear. Plenty of smothering going on and once again the umpire will ball it up. Well, the Bombers in plenty of trouble because the Blues are looking good again. They wasted many chances in that third quarter, even though they did kick four goals. Knocked out by Simon Matten. Corker Mielis goes after it. Motley's there too, but he goes over the line and it's out of bounds, but it's getting close to the Carlton goal. This time it's only about 50 metres around from that position. Still a goal, the difference in favour of Carl. Knocked out by Madden, kicked off the ground that time by Williams. Another stack up comes on here, and the umpire will ball this one up for sure. So we've got a bit of a stalemate out there at that half forward flank position for Carlton. But at least the Blues are keeping it in their attacking zone. About 50 metres out from their goal, out towards their half forward flank position. They're 59 points to Essendon 53. Grabbed here by Williams. Williams' kick is a hurried one. Chance for Madden to pick it up. He fumbles. He gets it the second time. Not a bad pick up for the big bloke. A short pass. Motley goes. Walsh can't mark it. He's attacked by three of them. Blackwell's grabbed. Umpire caught players. McClure is clear now. A shot at goal. But it's up target and out of bounds. There'll be a throw in right against the Carlton point post. So a big chance for Carlton to score again. And the pressure now back on the bomber of uh, defence. Ball out of bounds in that forward pocket position. The ball back into play. Well, no one really got advance of that knock at. Williams tries to crash through the pack. It's hurled out of the pack now. Dodging and weaving as Hawker gets the ball back. A chance for Big Matt and the mark. He dropped that one. Backing up well is Sean. That's smothered. He goes after it again. Going down is uh, Danaher, but the umpire said it'll be a ball up at centre half forward for Carlton. So they've had the ball on their forward line for the last five minutes, but they haven't scored a goal, but there's still a goal in front. 59 plays, 53. Picked up that time, driven up by Reigns. Now there's a mark taken by Ezard. He goes off pretty quickly, he usually does. He's driving the ball long, looking there for Spencer. Doridge is there, it's going to be a great battle here as they try to both pick up, they both go down. Doridge gets up, Spencer's on his back, he said it'll be a free kick to Doridge. And I reckon he's played a pretty good game here today, this big fella from West Australia. So he's got the free kick down there on the back pockets. 8 11 59 Carlton to Western 8 5 53 as we approach the 16 minute mark. Here's a go for a goal now. Reigns is clear, he fires, but he's off target and it's through for one point. So it's five points the difference now. Yeah, well, Dorotich, I thought, uh, kicked it much too square after that kick, probably around the boundary would have been a better idea. 59 to 54. Five points in favour of Carlton. Can they upset the Dons who have won their last 12 straight matches? Dorotich this time wider towards the outer side. Looking for Big Matten, knocked away by Danaher. Phillips is there, paddles it further forward. Opportunity for Kenny. Here's our danger for Carlton here. Meldrum, his opponent. Short pass from Meldrum on the Blackwell, short of the left centre wing. Blackwell, short pass again to half forward. Here's a chance for the Blues. Motley, can he get clear? No, great tackle, second chance. Short pass by the South Australian. McClure takes the grab. The Carlton skipper almost caught. Breaks the tackle. Around foul. Shoots. 20 minutes out. Is it a goal? That's experience for you, Pete. He dodged and weaved until he got his balance. Beautiful play by the Carlton skipper then. Carlton by 11 points. 9-11-65 to 8-6-54 on Seven's Big League. Well, that was great play. I think Motley may have been a bit lucky because whilst tackling him beautifully, then fell over. That gave Motley the chance. Out to McClure. Because Foles was off balance, he weaved and dodged, got around Foles the second time and went for the goal. And that's given Carlton a real chance. They're 11 points in front now. Mark McClure's first goal came up at the 16 and a half minute mark of the turn. At VFL Park, it's the Blues 65 to 54, an advantage of 11 points. Essendon with the breeze. Heard takes it from the centre circle up the half forward. Meldrum and Izzard had a great battle. Meldrum brings this one out, gets clear of Elshaw. Good shepherding. Sees the ball out towards Brad Shine in the left half back flank. Thompson blocked. Shine again. Keeps going around Phillips. Madden in front. Over the top. Corker Mealers. It will be a bounce on centre wing. Ball up on the centre wing position. Carlton 9 11 65 to Western 8 6 54. Not over yet because the Bombers will bounce back. They're 11 points in touch, uh, Carlton. As we approach the 18-minute mark of this last quarter, knocked out by Justin Madden, over to Corker Mielis. 
He goes down, tries to get about down to Johnson, but he's down too. They pounce on top of him. I notice that Phillips is there too, and the umpires call play on. Johnson comes out, gets the ball back there towards uh, Bradley. In goes Hunter, knocks, uh, we see knocks uh, Williams down. The ball finally cleared away by Files. It comes back to Blackwell, goes the big punch. Here's a go for Carlt now as Motley's got a chance for a goal. It's a bad kick. Oh, bad luck that time by Hurd. Down goes Williams. They're throwing themselves at the ball, both sides. And the ball is out of bounds. There was a chance that time for Hurd to mark. That was a difficult mark, but he dropped it. And there's a throw in about 15, 20 metres around from the Carlton goal. Well, they both missed that one. Picked up again by Mark Thompson. Played a slashing game in defence for the Bombers. Kicked off the ground by Dean. Back it goes towards... Uh, that's uh, Shine. He's upended. Down goes uh, Thompson again. They're putting press, but he's grabbed too high. And he'll take the free kick at centre-half back. So, 19 minutes gone. 65 plays, 54 in favour of Carlton. The ball back there towards the wing position now. Coming out as Dean. Taps it on beautifully to Blackwell. He doesn't hesitate. Up it goes to Mark McClure. There's a great mark to Mark Thompson. What a game he's playing, Peter. One of the best on the ground, certainly. He'd have to be in the boats. Mark Thompson left half-back flank. Short pass is on from him. Very close to the boundary line. Blackwell can't retrieve it. Thrown will take place in the middle of the interchange area, which is on centre wing. 19 and a half minutes gone. A thriller at BFL Park. 65 to 54. Carlton by 11. Dean. Oh, I don't know what he was trying to do there. I think he was trying to find Shine, but he couldn't spot him through the crowd, Pete. Crowd of players, that is. There's plenty around the ball, as you can see on that shot. Well, Madden got one too high. That's got to be a free kick. And the Essendon left footer will take it on centre wing. And his brother standing on the mark, giving him uh, the evil eye. Simon Madden, the former Essendon skipper. Getting some friendly advice from Justin and uh, shows him how it should be done. Knocked away by Kenny. Bradley's the opportunist there. Still tries to get clear, gets boot the ball. Kenny again. Scooped out past Duel. Dorotich might retrieve it. He does, but it's over the line. And it will be a boundary throw in the Essendon's left forward pocket. 20 and a half minutes gone. Most quarters have been going around about the 28-minute mark. Got down by Justin Madden, picked up by Elshaw. Here's Dangerous, he has a shot at goal, but off target and three for only one point, or is it out of bounds? It's a behind, and so that makes the difference now. Ten points at VFL Park. That's the goal the Bombers wanted, Pete. Yes, still plenty of time for them. They need two to win it from here. Dorotich. Danaher underneath it, Madden over the top, Blackwell, who's he got? No one runs straight into Hurd. Reigns pounces on that, but it's going to be, I think, a ball up right on the edge of the square. That will suit Carlton. A bounce, ground in very good condition despite this morning's heavy rain. Two Maddens do battle, now it comes to Shane Hurd, his kick is well smothered. to Kenny again. Still a stalemate developing. Once again, it's going to be a bounce. The ball up out there at uh, half forward for Essendon. They're trailing by 10 points. We approach the 22-minute mark. Well, the Bombers are, must get a goal now to be in this event. Knocked out by Justin Matton. Over to Elvin. A hurried kick back there towards that wing position. Plenty of fumbling going on by both sides. It comes out now. A hand pass coming out beautifully from Kenny to Bradley. And look at him go at it there at half four. He's got a paddock to run in. He takes full advantage. This could be a goal coming up. I know a hand pass to Albert. He fires at the goals. And what's he done with it? He's put it through for a goal. Oh, put down your glasses, Carlton. They've got the bombers now, I would say. So it's 10 goals, 11, 71. Carlton, the West of eight goals, 7, 55. We started out with 500 brand new Nissan Bluebird sedans and wagons, but at these special prices, they're running out. Bluebird GL four-speed manual sedan with free air conditioning, just $10,990.
Also Bluebird Wagon from just $10,990. <laughs> Bluebird GL sedan or wagon from only $10,990 from participating Nissan dealers, but only until they run out. Remember when you had to go to the bank? Now Westpac comes to you with our electronic banking system that lets you get cash when you buy petrol, pays for the weekly groceries, or something special, like a nightgown or a night on the town. We give you more efficient service with a smile, where and when you want across the street or across the country. All you need is a Westpac MasterCard or a Westpac card because the card is the bank and the bank is Westpac. Sally used to whip the cream, use what she needed, then store the rest in the fridge until it went off. Then she discovered Dairy Whip, real whipped cream in a can so she could use as much as she wanted when she wanted. She was beside herself with happiness. She could even use Dairy Whip with other toppings too. So ask yourself, why bother with the hassle and the waste when real whipped cream is as easy as Dairy Whip? This life of luxury can now be yours for a remarkably low $3,700 deposit at Parkmore Gardens, Keysborough. These new fully self-contained two and three bedroom own your own units can be yours today on this low deposit plus our exclusive bank finance package. But hurry, with this fantastic offer, these units will not last. See our representative seven days a week at Cheltenham Road, Keysborough, close to Parkmore Shopping Centre. Or see the Oliver Hume ad in Saturday's Sun Property Guide. One has a chauffeur and a lover. The other has children and a husband. Stephanie Powers has identical twins who share nothing in common except a secret desire to trade places. You really want to be me? Well, I don't. You want a little adventure in your life? Let's do it. Just imagine a fantasy adventure where nothing can go wrong as long as they keep their game a secret. The game is over. Will they tell the truth or will fate expose their secret game? One will be the target of a murderer. The other will get trapped. Barry Bostwick, Brenda Vaccaro, Gina Lola Brigida, and Stephanie Powers as the twin sisters in Deceptions. Premiering Sunday and Monday night at 8.30 on 7. Center bounce again. Knocked out by Justin Madden. Range goes through. He's collared. Picked up by Bradley. A short kick. Another fumble here on the umpire. Will ball it up at center field. 23 minutes gone. 71 plays. 55 in favor of the uh, Blues. And they've got this game just about one, I would say. 16 points that if it's knocked out by Madden again towards Carlton's half forward line. Walsh fumbles the ball. He can't pick it up. He'll go down. In goes Hunter. He's grabbed it. Only a free kick. It's scooped out again. The umpire right. said he threw that against Aspen and the free kick will go out there wide now to Donnell. Donnell to take the free kick at half uh, back. Centre half back actually falls short. Up goes uh, Hawke. It's tapped down a range. They go back into attack. Uh, the Bombers out wide. Coming out from middle is El Short. Dorridge is coming after him now. Can he get clear? Dorridge is right on his tail. He shows him a clean uh, pair of heels. He drives the ball up there towards the full forward position. Meldrum got his hand, but couldn't hold the mark. Going after the Zezard. They pile on top of him. Johnson down there in defence. And the umpire will ball it up about 20 metres out from the uh, Essendon goal. They're trailing by 16 points as we approach the 24-minute mark of this last quarter. And what a game it's been here today. Back it goes to Elshaw, right on the boundary line. His kick is a bad one. Tried to hook it over his head that time, but it went forward and it's out of bounds. And that's relieved a bit of pressure for Carlton's defence. I think they might have him, Pete. I think so, Luke. Because I'd reckon this quarter would go another four minutes... Five minutes at the most. And Essendon not playing well enough to pick up that 16-point uh, uh, leeway they're trailing. Fumbling going on. Blackwell's grab as he tries to get the pack. Still got the ball smothered. They pile on top of him. They're all having a bit of a dip. And the umpire once again will ball it up. And this certainly suits Carlton because it's wasting time for them. It's on their half-forward line. Well, Essendon's half-forward line about 65 metres out from their goal. Knocked out by Justin Matt. Corkamilis says grab as he grabbed too high. I think it's holding the man. He'll take the free kick there at half back. Well, this gives uh, Carlton a chance to go further forward. And they're in front by 16 points. And it's been a great day here today. The crowd over the 68,000 mark. And what a crowd. And who said football's had it? When you can get a crowd like that to a match. Kicked off the ground again by Williams. Out it goes towards the boundary line. And the ball is out of bounds up towards Carlton's half forward line. Well, actually, it's on the wing position. Let's say that. 
So it's a good distance around from the Carlton goal. But they've been front by 16 points. Justin Madden back to Williams. It was stopped in the pack that time. Williams tries to crash through the pack for the rest of the umpire said he had no hope. And that'll be a ball up still on the centre wing position. 10-11-71 Carlton to Western 8-7-55. Bounce on centre wing, nearly a minute at a time on, so only a few minutes left to play, and I would think Essendon's winning run has come to an end. Hunter gets beaten for it, and the ball paddled over the line by Frank Donnell. Who we thought had his number taken in the third quarter. Boundary throw in, right half forward flank for Carlton. Justin Madden doing battle with Simon Madden. A line ball decision, that one. Justin tries to pick it up, kicks it straight to his brother. And umpire Rowan Soares has again decided to affect the bounce. I think it's about three minutes to go, Pete. No more. And the Carlton fans chanting, they're pretty confident here at the moment. Hawker, Thompson, Donnell. Donnell's kick down towards left centre wing. Tommy Alvin might get there first. He does. Knocks the ball over the boundary line. That suits Carlton, certainly. And once again, we'll see a throw in. So Carlton trying to bottle it up on the member stand wing. Good tactics indeed, because they think they've got it run, and I must agree with them. 16 points, Carlton lead. Knocked out by Madden again. Justin, that is. A little further around the boundary line near the Essendon goal, but I don't think they'll worry too much about that. Another boundary throw in. At the back, Bradley. Punches it further around the boundary line. Once more a boundary throw in, but it's wasting time. Seconds ticking by now over the 27 minute mark. As Lou said, we probably won't see a quarter going 30 minutes, so. Only a couple of minutes left to play. Walsh this time doing the ruck work for Essendon. It's won by Spencer and a free kick going against Walsh. And it will be taken by Big Justin. Well, they've had a great battle, the two brothers. I'd say that, uh, well, I'd say it's a line ball, Pete. Yes. Actually, haven't had that much influence on the game, have they, really? Oh, this fella's come to light in this last quarter. He's done pretty well. Justin Madden from the right halfback flank for Carlton. 71 plays 55 at our match of the day. The Bombers look like losing their first match since last July. Blackwell has it stolen by Reigns. A real stack of developing on centre ring and holding the ball decision. I think he gave that one just to break up the pack. And he had no hope of getting rid of it. Free kick to Johnston. The dominator, right centre wing. Chance to put Carlton deep into attack. Goes for the short run instead, trying to find Motley. Walsh wearing him like a glove, taken by Hawker. Hawker under Williams, short of left centre wing. Williams has kick up to the half forward line. And a great mark showing fine judgment there with Paul Meldrum. Had a great game today, Meldrum, down there in defence or around the ground. Meldrum with the ball now, drops it short. Coming into meet it is Corkamilis. Time nearly running out uh, for this match. Into the quarter now by uh, 28 and a half minutes. And still the Blues in front by 16 points. So it's Tadar Eston as the ball is kicked by back by Meldrum again. Coming off, oh, beautiful play by Williams that time. He grabbed the ball, then he lost it. Good tackle against Desart. Picked up by Aspen. The ball back towards the wing position. It'll go for the boundary line, but that'll suit Carlton. They're 10-11-71 to Eston 8-7-55 as we approach the 29-minute mark of this last quarter. Knocked out by Madden again, going for the boundary line. And that suits them again, as I said before. They've yeah. slowed the Bombers really up, Pete. They've done that a lot in the last few minutes. Williams, you can see down there, not looking too good. There's the siren. There's the siren, and uh, Carlton have won the battle of the superpowers. 10 goals, 11, 71. To estimate goals, 7, 55. What a great victory for Carlton. Great victory, great victory for Robert Walls, their coach. Yes, and then winning streak of 12 on end comes to a halt. Before 67,000 fans at VFL Park, Carlton fans are furiously happy as the players leave the field. The 1986 Victorian Football League Premiership season is proudly sponsored by Carlton. Brewers of Foster's Lager, Australia's favourite beer. And so in the end it was Carlton by 16 points after they trailed at half-time by 17 points. Some bad news for Essendon. First of all, Frank Donnell reported on a striking charge and Darren Williams was also reported on a time-wasting charge. The worst news though is that he was diagnosed tonight as suffering from a broken left fibula. We saw him on the ground there just as the siren went. 
He's expected to miss 10 weeks. Paul Salmon left the field in the first quarter and he's reported to be suffering from a badly bruised left arm and also looks like missing the next two weeks. In the goals today at VFL Park for Carlton, Hunter, Ashman and Elvin got two goals apiece and for Essendon, their major contributors were Danaher and Spencer. They both kicked two goals. After the match, I went first of all to the Carlton rooms and I spoke to their former skipper, Wayne Johnston. I might have taken them apart in the first quarter, but I think we only had 2-2 two -two on the board to account for that. Against the sideline, I guess, and we knew that wasn't anywhere near enough, and uh, we were a bit worried at quarter time. Was the wind that strong? Because they seemed to have it in the last quarter. Oh, it was quite strong. Um, you know, early in the game, it didn't make all that much difference because it was very wet and greasy. In the, in the second half, we both probably had a four-goal four, four goal advantage going down to the uh, main scoreboard end. Early on it was pretty slippery. When when the ball came down there first, you just had to get your body in front and your body behind the ball and keep it rolling, so it was pretty slippery. What's the difference between playing in Perth and playing here? Have you noticed much difference? Oh, I think so. There's quite a large degree of difference. Um, I suppose the pressure, the atmosphere, you know, it's just a lot more physically tougher out here, but it's good. It makes you a better player, I think, in the end run. The game did get pretty tough at one stage. Oh, yeah, there's a couple of little heated exchanges, but I suppose it's a man's game, and if you can't take it, you shouldn't be out there, so... Has the side got better from week to week? You had a bad one against Hawthorne, but since then it's been great. Yeah, we've progressed along nicely at the moment, and I think we're very happy with today's result, but I think we've got to keep our feet on the ground. You know, that's just, that's just one very exciting win, but it's a long year, and, you know, September's what counts. It's all right winning today, but if we can't win in September, it's not worthwhile, is it? Yeah, we had our backs to the wall a bit, and uh, it was one of the uh, great games since I've been at Carlton. It's one of the great fighting efforts that we've had against the wind, and, you know, our backs to the wall, it was fantastic. What made the difference, as you see it? Well, I just think that, uh, you know, we just set ourselves to win this one and just put our heads down and our bums up and really had a go at it, you know, and we were really down in the first half. We weren't playing very well, but we were only a couple of goals behind, you yeah. know. So if it all sort of came together... It only says that you, you have to improve, you know, so, you know, it was great. Oh, well, as you know, we're naturally disappointed in losing the match, but um, both teams, I thought, played pretty well most of the day, and uh, Carlton, uh, in the end, sort of persisted and worked hard and, and got up. And whilst we're disappointed in losing, I thought probably it was our best performance of the year, and, and we lost. What You're watching the special Anzac Day edition of Seven's Big League, back after the break with Melbourne and the Sydney Swans. Hello again, Laurie Wilson in the 7 Newsroom. Among the main stories tonight on Newsworld, two 23-year-old women have been charged with a number of offences, including resisting arrest, assaulting police and being armed with an offensive weapon, following today's protest by women against rape during the annual Anzac Day march in Melbourne. A 32-year-old policeman is in a stable condition tonight and a 28-year-old man remains in a critical condition after two separate shooting incidents overnight. And in Spain, at least five members of the Civil Guard are dead after their vehicle was destroyed by a bomb blast in Madrid. We'll have a full report on those stories tonight in Newsworld. Drifting now tomorrow's weather, cool with some showers. If there were no arms race, if there were no crime, if your job didn't depend on economic factors outside Melbourne, if you didn't have to be concerned about your children's education, if you didn't have to worry about accidents or disease, you wouldn't have to watch Mel Walden and the seven national news. More complete, more concise, more meaningful. The more you watch, the more you'll know. Announcing new Best Ever Pal. These top Australian breeders have been trialling it on their dogs. What do they think of it? This new Best Ever Pal is even better than the old Pal. And that's really saying something. It's a lot chunkier. You can see that just by looking at it. And it's good and meaty. It's got the dogs looking magnificent. They're a picture of health. The dogs love it. I've never seen them so keen on their food. Top breeders recommend Best Ever Pal. For your body to have strong bones, it needs calcium. 
Your bones are operated by muscles, which need protein. But muscles rely on the nervous system, which needs vitamins. To keep all this going, you need energy. And only one drink has all these individual nutrients. Milk, the natural individual. At the MCG today, it was Melbourne's turn to play host to the Swans, who are chasing their fifth win in succession and, as such, possible league leadership. A patched up side with 10 senior players missing was beaten by Collingwood on Tuesday night in the Foster's Cup, but form wise, that was of little significance in comparison to their demolition job on Footscray last Sunday in Sydney. The Sydney team, however, has lost their last four games to Melbourne at the cricket ground and haven't won there against the Demons since round 17 in 1981. Today, both sides had to replace star players. Jimmy Edmonds out of the Swans lineup, while Brian Wilson will not play again this year for Melbourne. In the first part of the doubleheader, we pick up play tonight at the start of the last quarter with the Swans leading by 26 points. Our commentators are Sandy Roberts and Bob Skilton. Can the Demons make up a 26-point deficit or will they lose their first game here at the MCG for the year? On the other hand, the Swans looking to have their best start for a season since 1945. Withers' kick goes down towards the half-forward line. Flower sockers it off the ground, down towards half-forward. But a bad mistake there on that occasion by Richards sees the Sydney Swans clear back towards the centre, only to see that attack repelled once again. And he's off. Up towards half forward, no mark taken over the top of Batterston and at the bottom of the pack is Jared Healy. Well, the Healy boys have both done good jobs for their respective sides today. 24th possession. Here's another man who's worked hard in his 150th game, Morwood. Paul. To half forward. The sun again. Shining out as Wright goes through, but without the football, there'll be a free kick as Greg Williams went over the top illegally on that occasion and young Chris Connolly will take it. And he scoots off past Holden, gets his kick wide across the centre and Bernard Tui takes a strong one. Tui's kick again up towards half forward and again Rigolo takes the mark. And that's the second one in as many minutes by uh, Big Joe. Back towards the centre and the wind stopping that ball almost right in the centre circle. Bailey effectively spoiled then followed on his own good work to pick it up and kick it up towards half forward. Jarrett underneath it takes the mark. Looks for the player going past. Finds him in Peter Moore. Now he can go deep into goal here. He does going over the top and I reckon he's goal. Great start for the Demons in this final quarter. And the margin is once again 20 points on seven. Big lead. I saw it was a fine piece of play there as Alan Jarrett put the hand pass out, but I personally thought it was a point, Sandy. I, uh, <laughs> I thought it went through the other side of the post. But, uh, <laughs> did you? I really did. I thought the goal umpire made a drastic mistake there. Well, it could be an interesting one to watch your decision on World of Sport on Sunday. And I wondered, did that run a... No, I'm convinced that this I reckon that runner came out and said something then. Well, we might make a note of that and just uh, be able to have a look at it. But anyway, they're into attack again. Will this be a goal or a point? Neither, because Morwood has marked the kick that came from Healy. In towards the centre, a well-placed kick finds Paul Hawke. He was going to play on. In fact, I think he did play on, but the umpire allows him now to come back and have the kick. And a good kick it is. A spirally torpedo punt. Kapler up high. Couldn't take the mark. Over the back, it's Connolly. And Connolly puts it through for one point to the opposition. He was, uh, had nowhere to go. So he said, the best thing I can do is rush a point through. You know, Hughes of Melbourne, the full back. Last year's best and fairest winner. Lovely kick from Hughes. Almost reaches the centre and Peter Moore takes the mark. Moore. Played on now and now has to swing wide to the 
He's looking to go to the outer. Flower gives away a free kick, and Bernard Tui will take it. Dersma hoping for the advantage rule to be paid, but the umpire was having none of that. He'll bring it back, and Tui will take the free kick in defence, in between centre half back and centre of the ground. 68 to 89, 21 points to the margin held by the Swans, approaching the four minute mark of the final turn. Tui towards half forward. Withers in the front position. Tony Danaher, a nice mark. And Danaher, half forward. On the forward flank. Leach is saying that he's going to go long. And long it is. Coleman at the back. Connolly tackled, puts a high kick in the air. Doesn't go far enough to get to any distance. And Greg Healy comes out. Was tackled by his brother. Got the hand pass in. Newport picks it up well. Keeps it in play and bounces towards the boundary. That was excellent play by Newport. He had nowhere to go, so he just bounced it around the line and over the line for a throw in. Moore coming in from behind, up high, gets the tap. Bolton couldn't take possession, gets into the back of Newport. No free kick though, I thought that uh, Newport should have been given the free kick. And so we'll find a bounce to take place. Almost half forward flank for the Swans. He's not going to bounce it, he throws it up, so it must be damper than we think out there. Batterson gathers it in. Batterson towards half forward, he looks for Flower. Touched by Carroll, but Flower gathers it in now. The hand pass over the top to Richards. Richards took too long, it was nearly a trip. He now straightens up and goes to goal. Excellent play by Melbourne. So back come the Demons with two quick goals, and the margin is now just 15 points. Sydney 13-11, Melbourne 10-14 on sevens. Big lead. A good play by Flower. Read yeah. that one well. Carroll couldn't keep the tap the ball forward. So Robbie Flower, who's now at uh, centre half forward, has been since uh, half time or just before. And, uh, Here's the bounce. 15 points, the margin. Moore wins it against Ironmonger. Can they surge it forward once again? No, says Hawke as he gets the sweeping handball out wide. Finds its mark. Now the running player is Danaher. Receives, steadies, fires in towards goal. Is this the quick reply? I think it is. It is. And that's how quickly they can turn it back on again. So he kicks his second and Sydney's 14. 14-11 to Melbourne, 10-14. This hasn't been the most impressive day as uh, we see Dr. Jeff Edelson and his wife and in the background, Alan Aylott. And right the centre bounce. 21 points to margin, six and a half minutes into the final turn. Watching Sevens Big League, the MCG, Melbourne versus the Swans. Johnson could not get clear. Jarrett picks it up, loses possession, taps it on. Good play by Jarrett. Carroll comes through, strong, almost threw the ball out. Hawk was held. Lost possession of the ball and he's penalised, so Richards will take the free kick for Melbourne. He'll put this deep into attack too, Bob. Let's see what he can do with it. Russell Richards. He goes for the long kick. It's a nice kick by Richards up towards the square. And a well-judged mark by Greg Healy. Not good defence down there by the Swans. Not enough desperation whatsoever. A 15-metre penalty brings him right onto the line. And it should be 80 to 95, a 15-point margin after Healy has his kick. 20 possessions to Greg Healy. 16 kicks, four handballs. As umpire Rich indicates that's the angle. You can see for yourself. As Healy puts it through the centre and the margin, 15 points. Three goals now for Greg Healy and they're still having a bit of a chat about it, but don't worry, the goal is on the board and that's all that counts. Because of its soil deposit eliminator, the Hoover Elite 900 gets clothes cleaner and brighter. That's why Hoover is ahead of the rest. In some tyre stores, especially those owned by tyre manufacturers, your choice of brands could be limited to only one. 
At Bob Jane Tea Marts, they carry a wide range of the best Australian and imported brands. And with over 80 tea marts fitting thousands of tyres every day, Bob Jane has the buying power to heavily discount every one of these top brands. So always get a competitive price from your Bob Jane Tea Mart. You get a wider choice and a better deal on tyres. Subaru have just walked away with the Australian Rally Championship. And to celebrate, we've got... <coughs> we've got a million dollars available for bonus deals on new Subarus. On the sleek new Vortex. The exciting RX Turbo. And on our advanced two or uh, four-wheel drive sedans and wagons. See your participating Subaru dealer about our million dollar celebration. You should be able to... ...to clean up. That cop killed that boy. 8.30 Saturday. You ran that car. They ran that. He jumped out of the car oh. and he was crazy. Look, man, I'm telling you, the cop jacked up. Stay away. Conflicting no, 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 reports. Whatever happened, I didn't do what they're saying. A person on PCP can be a raging tiger one moment and totally calm and rational the next. Got no right to put a bullet in my boy's head. That's what I'm trying to get at. Anything is possible on PCP. Quincy Emmy, 8.30 Saturday on 7. Well, they want another one here, and the Melbourne members will certainly come alive in strong voice. Let's see what happens from the centre bounce. A good tackle on that occasion. The ball was held, however, despite Morwood's tackle, says the umpire, and another bounce to take place. And ten metres out of the centre circle, into Swan's territory. We played eight and a half minutes of the final term. Moore to Johnson. A hurried kick gathers little distance. Difficult one to grab. Tui doesn't work. Very courageous, Mark. Yeah, that's it. That was. Bernard Tui settling into the Swans pattern. Goes up towards the half forward line. Lyon thumps it away. Taken by Holden. Has to back pedal initially as he finds Williams who goes beautifully out to the half forward line. I don't know where he sees them but he just seems to pick them up and Bay's kick in towards full forward. Where's Kappa and Ironmonger? Kappa's at the back. But I think he was over the mark. He was in one corner. 16 points the mark. Hughes has kicked out beautifully all day. Moore is the target. In front, appeared to drop his head slightly. Couldn't take it. Bailey through. Gets it across to Withers. Withers another one to Flower. Now the Demons are alight as Robbie Flower hooks it across towards the half forward line. Should be a free kick. There will be. Phenomenal looking good, Sandy. Joe Regolo, who started this term with a couple of good grabs. Couldn't take that one, but was held. Now here's a chance to make the margin just 10 points. 35 metres out, almost directly in front. The kick from Regolo is ugly off the boot. And very, very ugly. Out of bounds on the field. He hasn't kicked well all day, Sandy, even from the defence. So are coming off the side of the boot like that. Bad luck for Joe and Melbourne as Carter to relieve some of the pressure. Still a 16-point margin. And he's saying, no, you've got to go back and kick over the mark. Very typical. That's mm -hmm. a the Still, that's what they're doing. While that's happening, there's an interchange. Looks like uh, Holden coming off. And uh, Barry Mitchell is back on the ground for the Sydney Swan. So uh, Craig Holden spending the bulk of the day on the bench. As Carter this time kicking from behind the mark. Moore couldn't quite take it. Nor could Morewood. Was the tackle too high? No, said the umpire. Mitchell, fresh man on the ground, gets a hurried right foot kick down towards the centre of the ground. At the back is Conley. Oh, but it's cleverly tapped forward by Bays to right. Stevie's away as he fires in towards goal and puts it through. Great goal by the running Stevie Wright. 
And the Sydney Swans are able to steady as they crack the ton. 15-12 to Melbourne, 11-14 on Seven's big lead. A fine play to Mark Bays there, Sandy. Yep. Tapped it over the top to allow Wright to get that. An excellent piece of play. And uh, little Mitchell doing well, coming back off the interchange bench and taking that ball out of defence. There's Mark Bays and on the wing. Centre bounce. Coleman against Moore. Peter Moore gets a tap, not a clear one. It's picked up by Healy across the bays. Gets through the tackle. Puts the short kick in, looking for Bolton. Bolton a hand pass over the top to Wright. A chance of a score again. As Stevie Wright this time is offline, though, and the one point the result. And that point takes the Swans to 15-13. 103 with Melbourne 8, 11, 14, 80. Lovely kick once again. Burke. Taken by Connolly. The long kick towards half forward. Carroll in the front position. A nice mark. Carroll. 13 kicks to Dennis Carroll. That was the drop punt. And the mark taken out wide by Greg Williams. Williams puts it down towards the forward pocket. Newport coming back. Takes an easy mark. Newport. Done reasonably well today, Sandy. A hand pass oh. off. Puts Hughes under trouble. That's poor play. The minute you give them a ref, Sandy. <laughs> the muzzle. <Muslim. laughs> oh, There's just no sense in that whatsoever. It's one of the decent punt. Moore gets a tap. Tap back now by Hawk. Picked up by Bays across to Williams. Dummies beautifully, but it's well smothered. Good play by Melbourne. And we find now Williams puts it across. It's fumbled, though. And Withers has done a good job since coming off the interchange bench, but on that occasion, just couldn't get clear with it. And the Swans have a brief respite. Coleman and Moore. Hawk. Kick smothered. Comes wide. Tony Danaher came in. Did well to take the ball. Can't get clear with it, though. And a bounce must take place. Bounce from the centre square line towards the outer. Coleman and Moore. Coleman got the tap. It's intercepted by Batterson's kick over the shoulder. Two, he couldn't take it. And a bad bounce for him. Sees it bounce well for Pole. Shows a good turn of speed. Has time for a bounce. Oh, no. Almost loses it though. Gets the hand pass into Johnson. Johnson goes goalward. Coming across, but it's still, I feel. And a lovely goal to Melbourne. Kicked by Alan Johnson. We've still got 200 brand new Nissan Bluebird wagons at the fantastic low run out price of $10,990, but they're running out. That's right, four speed manual Bluebird wagons for the super low price of just $10,990, but that means they're running out fast. Secure a spacious, economical Bluebird GL wagon for a never to be repeated $10,990, but only until they run out. All you need is one hand and one eye, and you can control the miracle of the video age. Sony Handycam, the world's smallest, lightest, most easy to use video camera recorder. And because it uses the new Video 8 format, its picture and sound quality is phenomenal. Sony Handycam, a miniature part of the world's most complete range of Video 8 products, and a major part of the Sony Vision. No matter how you plan to spend your retirement, one thing you're going to want is security. And that's exactly what Westpac's Club 55 offers. An investment package that gives you a high rate of interest paid monthly. Free advice on anything to do with your retirement or your money. Excellent travel benefits. And free access to all the advantages of our national electronic banking system. Most of all, it gives you a secure start to the rest of your life. Club 55, from Westpac, the bank. We've seen a whole lot of champions in Australia on NEC, Australia's champion colour TV. Seen them run, swim and fall, seen them hit and do it all. NEC, our champion colour TV. From the champs in colour TV comes a knockout selection of portables, like this handy little all-rounder. See the whole range of NEC's affordable portables at your retailer now, and you'll see why NEC is leading the field. NEC, our 
Sunday, its early morning starts and nobody's happy about it. Having a bath at six o'clock in the morning plays havoc with my pussy. It's how you being served. The Sanders may be a little late. He was going away for the weekend, I believe. Say hello, oh. say hello. To side splitting comedy. How's your queen pudding? It hasn't quite fulfilled its promise. <laughs> While at eight, Sid's learning culture. But is it art? Is it true? Frontal nude protesting. Let's bless this house at eight. Sunday night laughter from 7.30 on 7. 86 to 103. Alan Johnson, 13 kicks. 17, Sandy. That's another quick four, gives him 17. So here we are back in the middle once again. Margin of 17 points. Flower spins out, but then into trouble. Williams throws it out, but allowed to go on. Pushed out in front of Withers. Who's going to get there first? And in fact, it won't be Withers and it'll be no one because Carroll couldn't stop it going over the line. So another throw. Well, they've tried their hearts out, the Demons, but they just haven't been able to catch them yet. And time is starting to run out as Moore flicks it over the back, winning. It should be a free kick to Brett Bailey. And he'll take it for a push. They've got to get it down there quickly and they've got to convert. Well, he's wobbled that right across... Uh, Guys was asleep. He <laughs> was asleep because it should have been spoiled, but it didn't matter. Burke took it, but he's really not much closer. He's at half forward. And that one comes off the side of the boot, down towards full forward. Ian Roberts waits down uh, close to the boundary line with Rod Carter, and he takes it over the line. So a throw in. In Melbourne's right forward pocket, 16 minutes played, and they trail by 17 points. Johnson a chance. Caught. Oh, hits the post. And he got out of one tackle. Kicked under pressure. And for AJ, one goal score. And this Carroll with a long kick. New foot into the back of his opponent. Gives away the free kick. And so Bays will take the free kick. Lovely kick from Carroll. Put it right out of the danger area. Nice kick from Bayes towards half forward. Punched away from Richards. Hughes comes through. Good, strong defensive work. Puts it long back towards the halfback. Burke uses his body well. Dersma comes out though. Strong in defence. Gets it clear but loses possession. Regolo picks it up. Bayes comes in. Cannot get the ball clear. And they're slipping and sliding. And we'll find a bounce will take place once the little wrestle stops. And, uh, the bounce will take place. Half forward flank for Melbourne, with Melbourne on 87 points, the Swans 103. 17 minutes have gone in the final term here at the MCG. Coleman gets the tap down to right and towards the centre. It's all Melbourne. Richards picks it up, breaks the tackle, runs his full distance and puts the long kick down towards the square. Reynolds in the front position, it's punched away by Carter, but Flowers first on the scene. Beautifully walks out of trouble, snaps towards goal. Right. And he's just offline, deserved better. Excellent play by Flower. At one point goes on the board. 12-16, 88, 15-13, 103. Carter favours the long kick. Tony Moorwood couldn't take the mark. Withers gets the hand pass to Moore. Moore's kick off the side of the boot, out towards the half-forward flank. Williams is up, punches it away, and Healy comes in, taken away from him by Jarrett. Jarrett picks it up and goes towards Healy of Melbourne, and Greg Healy, three goals on the board at the moment, and should have the opportunity of making the margin only nine points. Greg Healy, 35 metres out. I mean, kick number 18. And he has kicked three goals to date. Should make it four with his kick and nine points to the margin. Greg Healy. Nine points is the margin as Healy kicks his fourth goal. Four goals to Greg Healy all since half-time. He's been an excellent player. We were quiet in the first term as we see John Northey, Frank Adams. And that would be... Very happy with the way Melbourne have played in the second half. We made a number of changes. Peter Moore has really lifted in the ruck. Jeffrey Edelston 
And the Demons fans yelling for their team to go on. Sent about nine points the margin. Can they go on with it now? Hawk an illegal tackle and they will go down to the half forward line. Paul Hawk just a little enthusiastic on that occasion. Burke gets underneath one. Doesn't gather a lot of distance. Flowers at the bottom of the pack. Batterston waits for the ball to come out. It's with him now. He pushes it clear. But Bolton's got the pace. Does it well as he turns back out of trouble. Gets a hurried kick up towards the half forward line. And the mark is taken <laughs> there. I thought he was off for Russ Richards. But the umpire said no. Well, the Sydney Swans have been able to answer the challenge. Can they now? The margin is nine points to centre wing. Once again, the mark is taken from Melbourne by Steve Newport. He swings it in towards half forward. A good mark taken in that position by Healy. And what a day he's had. 19 kicks for Greg Healy. There's a courageous mark. That was mark number seven. Here's a chance to bring the D's within the three points. But is he too far out, Robert? Not just be seen, but you never know. They've been kicked from there before. Let's see what he does. It's a good-looking drop punt in towards the square. Won't quite make the distance and tapped over for one behind. Eight points the difference. Rod Carter will put the ball back into play. The Swans have been going long from full-back. Carter does so now. Tony Maud in the front position. Lyon taps it away. Bays gets the short kick in. Richard showing a good turn of speed. Comes out in front. Richards, I thought, was Halwin not in possession, but no, no free kick to Russell Richards. And so the umpire will bounce it right on the centre square line. 95 to 103. Eight points to margin in favour of the Swans. Richards gets the big tap. It's picked up by Williams. Not a well-placed kick, though. It goes out wide where it's all Melbourne. Melbourne doing all the running in this term as Cole puts it back in towards the centre. Hawke couldn't quite take the mark. It's tapped on. A hand pass. Bolton got into the back of his opponent. Coming out, Coleman tapping the ball in front of him. Glenn Coleman now gives the hand pass out. Looking for Ian Roberts. Roberts now puts it up towards centre wing. Greg Healy leads in the race for the ball. Can he stay in play? No, he cannot. And it'll be a throw in on centre wing, member's side of the ground. Points the margin between the sides. 21 and a half minutes have gone in the final turn. Here's the throw in. Moore coming in from the side. Bailey tries to tap it further afield, but it's taken by Stevie Wright. He can go short here. And the Swans have got possession through Hawke. Can he get clear? Eludes one, then goes long. Kappa, Ironmonger, no mark taken. Turner is there for the Demons over the top. And the umpire will come in and have a bounce. 22 minutes gone. The margin is eight points. <laughs> there could have been a free kick. Well, he's picked up the second one. Batterston. Melbourne want a goal and they want it smartly. They've got the opportunity here if they can create the loose man with Cole dropping down. Goes over him. Rigolo tried to tap it clear. Couldn't do so. Free kick has gone the way of the Sydney Swans and it's Williams who receives on the outer side. Greg Williams kick up towards half forward once again. No one at home. Bays goes storming through. Was he held without the football? No, the umpire said you can play on. Play on they do. Still in possession. No effective kick away. Eventually dropped up towards half forward where Bailey takes the mark. He goes with a longer kick. Back towards the centre goes the kick from Brett Bailey. Only to see Bernard Tui scout the crumbs to half forward, more over the top, a good man. Well, we're in the 24th minute. There'll be a bit of time on, but they want a goal, Melbourne. They're going short, and they're mucking around with it. And that will not work. Mitchell gives it to Ironmonger. Another one across to Morwood. He gets caught, goes to ground. This is fierce stuff going on in the closing minutes of this game as Connolly goes out to the half-back line, and you'll see Bays take the mark. Lovely mark to Bayes. Excellent defence by Melbourne. The game has really come alive. The best football of the, the game in this term. Moore up high. Mitchell can't get the boot to ball. Kicked off the ground by Connolly. It comes out towards halfback. Taken by Withers. Withers puts it up towards the centre of the ground. Up high and a lovely mark to Played Newport. On. Played on, but he's going to be given the benefit of the doubt by the umpire. 
A beautiful mark to Newport. And Newport. The torpedo punt towards head half forward. No mark taken. Hawk gets one in the back. Full play on. Batterson's short kick drops short. And so Dersma comes out with it. Puts it wide. Looks for Williams. Finds that player. Williams now. Swings it towards centre wing. Coleman coming out in the front position. Was going to hand pass, but a nice piece of shepherding by Carroll allows Coleman to go towards centre half forward. Over the top it comes. Caput takes possession. Caput now has the bounce. Gives the hand pass across to Gerard Healy. Healy tackled, gets the hand pass in. It's intercepted by Hughes. Diving back in was Kappa, and he traps the ball there. So both sides showing tremendous desperation, and a bounce will take place. Almost into the 26th minute of this game. From the bounce, can the Swans get a steadying goal? Can Hughes get Melbourne out of strife? And he tried to get it away. The umpires call play on. Oh, here's a chance for the Swans. It's pushed down towards half forward. And the mark is taken across half forward, some 35 to 40 metres out by Barry Mitchell. And he'll have a set shot at goal. Hasn't goal to date. But this could just about sit. The margin is eight points at the moment. Mitchell's dropped pub on its way. The goal umpire has a good look and says, all clear. And the Sydney Swans lead by 14 points. 16-13 to 13-17 on Seven's big lead. Tommy Hafey would breathe a sigh of relief there, Sandy, because uh, uh, he's really been beaten by Melbourne in this term. It's Melbourne just not quite, quite able to hit that front as Greg Healy is in the battle of the cramp. And he's uh, hasn't had a lot of training, I don't think, this year. Um, he's had a superb game today. From the bounce. Coleman and Moore. Coleman up high. Gets the tap down. Hawk couldn't get clear with the ball. Trying to come through with Burke. Moore's in there with Burke. It comes back towards Burke again. Still can't get it clear. Wright tries to tap it out. And the bounce to take place. The bounce about 10 metres on the swan side of the centre circle. Thrown up by the umpire. Moore takes it. Grabs it. He shouldn't have done that. But he's not penalised by the umpire. Holden gains possession. Can't get boot to ball. Comes out to Withers. With his short kick, runs out towards centre wing. Tui taps the ball back. Williams comes into lens support. Cole did well to get the ball to Regalo. Got one too high, but called play on by the umpire and is penalised. I thought it was a tackle too high, personally. But the free kick going to the Swans, Greg Williams. 18 kicks, 16 handballs to Williams as he finds Bays on the long left foot kick up towards the forward pocket. Runs over the boundary line. And they will not mind that because the time will tick away. 27 minutes have gone. 95 to 109. 14 points the margin. Ironmonger in the front position gets the tap down. Has been given the free kick. Moore coming over the top and hanging on. Ironmonger should put it right into the square. 14 points, the advantage held by the Swans. 27 and a half minutes, Kappa and Hughes. Kappa not leading, he wants it high into the square. A high kick it is from Ironmonger. Hughes in the front position, takes a nice mark. 15 metres could easily be paid. And Danny Hughes comes across goal. A little dangerous, but Bailey takes it. Now handballs back to Hughes from Johnson. A poor kick, though, from Johnson. Green is swinging into play. Greg Williams lines up. He's offline and one point. So Williams gets three points for the day. 95 to 110. A 15-point margin held by the Swans. As Danny Hughes goes long, straight up the ground. Jarrett couldn't take the mark. Good roving by Connolly. Puts it straight up the ground. Flower comes out with it. Gets the hand pass out wide. Batterston, not a good kick from Batterston, wobbles towards Regalo, Regalo's hand pass misses Cole it's intercepted by Bays Bays goes towards halfback and finds Danaher, Danaher with a hand pass across to Roberts Roberts puts it along, Connolly in the front position takes the mark, gets a push which sends him forward in towards the centre and Kappa poor play 
just easily gives away a free kick downfield. Madison with the kick. Madison goes long, straight down the ground. Regolo in the front. From behind, Jarrett takes a timely mark. 29 minutes have gone, 15 points to margin. It should be nine after this as Dersma hobbles away. So, little probably Alan Jarrett. Puts it through for his first goal. And once again, nine points to margin. But 29 and a half minutes have gone in the final term. 14-17, 101 Melbourne. The Swans, 16-14, 110. Both sides look very tired. This is understandable with the rain we've had. So heavy turf really takes it out. No clear tap. Wright taps it on. Picked up by Coleman. A high kick up towards half forward. Connolly stood his ground well. Well supported by Hughes. Comes out towards the wing. Batterson first there. And towards half forward, he's looking for Flower, and he's keep it in play. No, he cannot. Runs over the boundary line, and so we're throwing to take place as the siren sounds. The Swans 16-14, 110, defeating Melbourne 14-17, 101. The 1986 Victorian Football League Premiership season is proudly sponsored by Carlton, brewers of Foster's Lager, Australia's favourite beer. The Swans got the four points so far undefeated in the season, winning by nine. But the bad news, first of all, Gerard Healy reported on a striking charge. And even worse news, Merv Neagle, their star centre man, is likely to be out of action for possibly six, uh, six weeks suffering from a slightly strained medial ligament. So perhaps the Swans now may redouble their efforts to fit Morris Rioli into their salary cap. In the stats, as we take a look at them, the Swans had ten more marks, three more frees, 33 more handballs, the hit-outs and the shots at goals were even. In the goals, for the Swans, first of all, Kappa, Coleman and Bolton each got three. And for the Melbourne side, Greg Healy was their major contributor and he finished up with four goals. In the Swans' room after the match, Bob Skilton spoke first of all to Tony Danaher. Oh, it's tremendous, Bob. The, uh, just the, uh, they read the play a lot better and they, they're very good under a crisis. And we seem to get in tight situations and they're the players that we can rely on to lift us, Jared. And, and Greg Williams and Bernard Tui and Jimmy Edmund are tremendous to have around the ground. Did you expect Melbourne to be as tough as they were? Yeah, I did. We uh, we seen the red play against when they played Essendon last week and they fought the game right out again against Essendon and played very well. And they've got a lot of young, very keen guys, so we knew it was going to be hard. But uh, we'll be disappointed with our last quarter fade out. We'll happen to go on and, and record a better win. But to, to Melbourne's credit, they just never gave in. Peter Moore really lifted his game in that second half. Yeah, he did. Peter gets out on his own a lot. If you don't watch him, he can, he can tear you to pieces. So we're down in that department. We didn't pick up as quick as we should have. And uh, if you let any team do that, well, I'll soon catch it to shreds. Well, it felt pretty funny. Uh, I nearly went up the wrong race at halftime. But um, I, was pretty, I was pretty well built up for the game. And uh, it was good to get it over and done with. And uh, luckily for me, uh, we came out with a win. What happened in that last quarter there? Melbourne almost snuck it. Yeah, we, I think uh, our running players stopped. Uh, Melbourne got a bit of a sniff of victory. The members started cheering and uh, they almost took it out of our grasp. But uh, fortunately, we lifted at the right time and we got the four points. Little brother had a bit to do with that Melbourne comeback too. Yeah, I've, uh, maybe I taught him a little bit too much, but he was uh, marking like a big man and kicking pretty straight. He was uh, showing me how to do it there in that last quarter. He, he played very well. Well, Carlton beating Essendon, you're sitting on top of the ladder. How do you view next week's game against Carlton? Oh, well, next week's game's certainly our biggest test yet. Um, we had a big one against Footscray last week, of course, and we came through that very well. Uh, we'll be gearing up. We've got uh, an extended week. We'll be training very hard and coming out full guns for Carlton. Gerard Healy speaking to Bob Skilton. The second half of the doubleheader at the MCG coming up in just a moment. Tired and on a fixed income, we have to watch how we use our money. SIO's Retired Persons Plan for House and Contents Insurance gives us real security at a healthy discount. 
we get new for old replacement value and $5 million liability cover so we can really relax and enjoy retirement. SIO's Retired Persons Plan. It's a money saver. Victorian Golden Carrier sold in the SIO. They're okay. What we call national at home, we call Panasonic at the office. What we call national at home, we call Panasonic at the office. What we call national, we call Panasonic. Panasonic, office automation. The Fussy Furniture Fellas having a clearance you'll never forget. Quality furniture is being shoved out the door at huge discounts. Out go dining suites, wall units, bedroom suites, children's furniture, genuine leather lounge suites in the latest fashion colours. There's never been a clearance like it. Amazing discounts on absolutely everything. And 10 months interest-free terms. Yes, 10 months interest-free. At the Fussy Furniture Fellas, three giant warehouses. Thomastown, East Keylor and the Monash Homemaker Centre Clayton. That's no bull, Rosa. It stopped me in my tracks. So that's the Mitsubishi Magna Elite. They told me that it's a totally new class of clothes. Mm. Spacious and contoured seats. Mm. Well, look at that electronic dash. So clear. Hi-fi stereo. Graphic equalizer. Sounds great. And a four-speed automatic with electronic overdrive. Very smooth. Power windows. Let's try the air conditioning. Mm. That's better. And power steering and central door locking. You'll find that features that are options on most other cars are standard on Magna Elite. I couldn't take my eyes off it. The magnificent Magna Elite, a totally new class of class from Mitsubishi. Car maker of the year again. One has a chauffeur and a lover. The other has children and a husband. Stephanie Powers has identical twins who share nothing in common except a secret desire to trade places. You really want to be me? Well, I don't you want a little adventure in your life? Let's do it. Just imagine a fantasy adventure where nothing can go wrong as long as they keep their game a secret. The game is over. Will they tell the truth or will fate expose their secret game? One will be the target of a murderer. The other will get trapped. Barry Bostwick, Brenda Vaccaro, Gina Lola Brigida, and Stephanie Powers as the twin sisters in Deceptions. Premiering Sunday and Monday night at 8.30 on 7. Second match in the MCG doubleheader was the clash between North Melbourne and Geelong. Teams the supporters of both clubs would certainly agree have been rather disappointing so far in the season. It was North Melbourne's second night game for Premiership points this year. They lost a thriller to Hawthorne in the second round, while last year lost to Carlton and Collingwood also under the MCG lights. The Kangaroos were strengthened by the return of their vice-captain Ross Glendinning for his first game of the year, while the Cats decided to gamble with Gary Ablett after naming him as a possible interchange player. Our replay tonight begins at the start of the second quarter. North Melbourne is leading by one point. Our commentators at the cricket ground for this match are Peter McKenna and Jack Edwards. From the Melbourne cricket ground on this Anzac Day 86, North Melbourne 3-3-21, leading Geelong 3-2-20 in the second of the games this afternoon at the Melbourne cricket ground. Once again, Flanagan got the ball down, taken away here by Buse. He gets a hand pass moving out again, and Geelong moving forward to the half-forward zone. Yes, and this is Bruce Lindner, three goals in the first quarter. He goes onto the left foot, he brings it down towards Brownless. He's got it too, Billy Brownless. He snaps. No, he hand passes it across there, and a flying shot by Morgan, and I think he's put it through. Good play, Brownless. Beautiful football, Geelong. Yes, good play by Brownless. Geelong and North Melbourne sprung a surprise this afternoon, or this evening, when the North Melbourne included Jimmy Cracker, and uh, there's the replay of Lindner going, putting that ball into Ward Brown. Let's watch this piece of uh, hand work. He was going to have a hurried shot at goal, but he shot it out there, and Morgan's left foot snap finds the goal. So it's a good piece of football. Well, Peter. tremendous play by Brownless, because there he is on screen, uh, Big Billy. He's a pretty tall player. He'd be every bit of six foot four as we see the scoreboard. 4-2 Geelong, North Melbourne 3-3. We're seeing a very good game. But a very... Uh, 
intelligent player, Brownless, and a very unselfish full forward. Twice he's given the ball to players in uh, better positions, which have resulted in goals. There's Hocking hand passing the ball away. It's a chance for North Melbourne through Spargo on the left foot up to Phil Cracker against Bright, who's doing well down there. Grabbed by Hocking. Hocking breaks away on the right foot. He kicks it to the centre of the ground. The mark's been taken by Hughes. Hughes to Johnston. Peter Johnston. Oh, chief. He's not kicking any better down the back line. There's Jimmy Cracker, a hand pass looking for Glenn Dinning. He thumps it away to McCann. McCann over the back tries to get it out. He does. A bit of shepherding going on by Jonas. He eventually knocks it on to Steele. Darren Oops. Steele from half-back flank. Uh, Linda and Lord John Law was doing some strong shepherding there. Dropped by Johnston. In goes Jonas. Coming through his boss. He goes straight ahead at the ball. Uh, Mark Boss as he kicks it long up towards the pocket. Over the back is a chance there for Christensen. As he, no, it's not as drum as he dived on it. Now it's grabbed by Glenn Dinning. Onto the left foot goes Ross Glenn Dinning. Hooks it back. He's doing well. But it comes here to Damien Christensen. Onto the right foot. A little step pass. It's a beauty. And he's found Linda, who's creating all sorts of problems for Law up on that forward line. Or is it Steele on him now? I think he was on Law at one stage in the first quarter. And now Darren Steele's picking him up. You can see Steele. This is firing from... About 30 metres out, very acute angle. He's had seven kicks and he's firing for his fourth goal and he's been in everything, uh, Bruce Lindner. There oh. it is, the goal going right through the centre. We can certainly find the goals. Four shots for four goals uh, from Bruce Lindner. Very good kicking for goal. Geelong 5-2-32, North Melbourne 3-3-21. And North could be in a spot of, a spot of bother. You watch well, this kick from this, Lindner. I haven't seen a better exhibition for a long time of drop punt kicking. They, they have not wavered. They've been magnificent kicks. And uh, the, every one of his uh, shots for goal, the four of them, have split the centre and it's uh, terrific to see. There's uh, John Dugdale at the back and John Kennedy on the phone. He'd be a worried man at the moment because, uh, well, North don't look good and Geelong look as though they, they've got a bit of sparkle. And with the pressure on Brownless and uh, Ablett, of course, Lindner's able to float around that forward line and do some damage. Yes, giving Geelong a three-pronged attack. Flanagan getting a hand pass out working. Glenn Denning doing well at half-back but loses possession to, to Jimmy Cracker now. Moving the ball to the half-forward zone. Stanley oh. can't take the mark. Went down heavily and the umpire has said a free kick to Ian Fairley of North Melbourne. He'd be too far out to score. He'd have to hope for someone to take a mark. Going back as McDonald against Johnston. Neither take the mark. It's in front of the pack. It's been picked up by Spargo, is it? The left foot shots toward goal, but it was meant to go toward goal, but it was nowhere near and out of bounds on the full. So not a good shot there by Spargo. And Geelong will take the result and free kick from the back pocket. And Terry Bright will be the recipient. Only been playing now four minutes of the second term on Seven's big lead, uh, league at the MCG. The first game was a good one. Only nine points in it. May this one be as close as that. It's Bright from the back pocket. Terry Bright doing very, very well on Phil Cracker too. Up towards Peter Johnson. The ball is thumped away. Grabbed by Marcus Siri. Onto the left foot he goes. Up towards the forward pocket. Bright out in front again. But I think... Uh, North have been unsettled so far by the, the good hard work of the Geelong players. They're boring in after the ball, they're tackling well, and there's putting a bit of pressure on this uh, this normally very skillful North Melbourne side. There's Big Flanagan on screen. Donald McDonald of North Melbourne will oppose him. Flanagan got the tap to Hughes. Well, not too. Got it too nicely. Hughes moves it up toward the wing. Glenn Denning comes out. Atkins picks up for North Melbourne. Shoots it toward McCann. McCann kicks long. That's one for the high flyers. Who's going to do the flying? Little Cracker. Jimmy Cracker picks up. He can't get out of the pack. His hand pass ineffective. In he goes again. Gets ridden into the ground. But the umpire said the ball held to him. And a bounce will take place only 25 metres out from North Melbourne's goal. Yes, and this is umpire Shane McDonald, as Jack said earlier, having his first... Uh, match in league football. There's Buse taking it away from the back line. Here they come. This is Johnny Hoyles bringing it towards centre wing. Lindner's there again in front. Over the back is Ablett. Oh, cleverly done as he gets it to Drum. Drum gets away with the football. Over to Cleve. Cleve off the side of the boot. Not a good kick. Out wide it comes as it's knocked away there by O'Keefe. O'Keefe has got it on uh, centre wing. Goes for the stab kick. It's a good pass and finds Darren Morgan. And they're looking dangerous, the Cats. Morgan will swing onto the left boot. He does. He kicks it high. Brownless has got the set. He should mark it. He does. And he's creating a lot of problems for Michael Passmore down there. Yes, had he realised then, Peter, he could have gone in on the left foot, swung right back into goal. He's going for his first goal. Mr. Fairley, one so easy one in the first quarter. It was out of fair way, but Brown was putting the boot right behind it. Look at that. He kicks long and he kicks straight, Billy Brown. It's right through the centre. Geelong looking good on Seven's big league. Geelong 6-2, 38. North Melbourne 3-3,
tyre buyers. Announcing a Bob Jane super deal. Bob Jane has landed thousands of these top quality steel radials and he's got to sell them fast. So he's ripped up the old price of $55 and is letting them go for only $49. That's right, and that's fitted to your car. Just $49 fitted on your car at your Bob Jane T-Mart. And they've been quality and endurance tested by Bob Jane's own test team. So drive in to your nearest Bob Jane T-Mart tomorrow and get fitted up with these at only $49. The new Holden Astra has arrived. With a new 1.6, it sails up hills. That's a clever little Astra, you know what I mean? Go all the way on just one bill. With a clever little Astra, you know what I mean? There are features galore and a long hatch floor. In a clever little Astra, an automatic door and a whole lot more. What a clever little Astra, you know what I mean? The new Holden Astra. Just no match for such a clever little hat. <laughs> Energy is something that anyone can run low on from time to time, whether from the effects of sickness or from just being on the go. Lucozade restores energy fast because Lucozade contains glucose identical to that which your body draws from the bloodstream. Bounce back with Lucozade, family size or milk bar size. Lucozade restores energy fast. Excuse me. But with Continental Hot Pot, there's no need to add carrots. They're already there. And no need to add tomatoes or onions. They're already there. No need to add herbs and spices. They're... Look, does Continental Hot Pot already have African artichokes? Ah, well, no. Ta-da! Continental Hot Pot gives you a delicious, nourishing casserole every time because everything's already there. Continental Hot Pot. Just add meat. Oh, and African artichokes if you like. If we get in trouble... I'm going to do whatever I have to. Yeah. Friends or no friends, get it. Max oh. in Sons and Daughters. It wasn't only losing a lover, I was losing the only man who'd given me a... a sign of happiness. Hello, young lovers, whatever your style. <laughs> now, I know you weren't thinking of a girl, but she's a hard worker. And she loves gardening. That was your last chance. From now on, I'm making sure there'll be no one to hear you but me and Mickey. Sons and Daughters, 7.30 Monday on 7. At the centre bounce once again, Brown is only 19, he's 193 centimetres, he's fairly tall as Peter told you. Now North have to get back into this game, but can they? Hurried from the centre of the ground, is kicked up long by Smith, up to the full forward zone, picked up and shot into Ward goal, and North have kicked a goal on this occasion by Fairley. Good piece of work by Ian Fairley, picking the ball up, kicking truly, and North Melbourne needed that one, Pete. I'll say uh, Fairley's had six kicks. There he is on screen, Ian Fairley, who uh, has have a look at this again in replay. Thumped away by Bright. He's doing well, but Fairley backed up beautifully at the base of the pack, took the bounce and slammed it through for a much-needed goal to North Melbourne. And I think John Kennedy will breathe a little bit easier after that one, Jack. Yes, that he will, but uh, still 11 points down North Melbourne. Fairley, 21 years of age, doing quite well. McCann. Got that tap from the ruck. There's a chance now for Turner. Put the head down, looking for a free kick. And the umpire oh, said, that's right. <laughs> oh, gee. There's experience for you. He, I think he conned the umpire a bit there, Mickey Turner, as he brings it towards half forward. Lidner against... They've got Demetrio on Lidner now. Yes, they have got Demetrio on him. So that's an interesting move as we see Boss trying to press his way through. Ran into Johnny Law. Glenn Dinning's there. Now it's Morgan. Morgan gets the hand pass out. John Law goes in. Strong play by Law. Hand pass beautifully to McCann. McCann further afield to Peter German. German's got a paddock to run in. He runs to half forward. He kicks long. The crackers are there. Two of them over the back was bright. And uh, they're lacking... A heck of a load's gone through for a point, but they're lacking Jack a lot of marking power down in the goal square at the moment because Phil Cracker's been well beaten by Terry Bright. Well, they were. The both crackers were flying there. They should be doing the roving, not I trying mean. to take the marks overhead. Flights. So Bright now moving it out to Ward Turner, who led well, but Jimmy Cracker chipped in, couldn't hold the mark. And good work by Turner finds the boundary line for a throw in and that forward pocket position for North Melbourne. Scoreboard showing 28 to 38. Geelong leading North Melbourne. Eight and a half minutes into the second term. Well, they've now put McDonald down to the goal square with uh, Johnston picking him up, and they badly needed someone tall down there as we see Boss on the left foot bring it towards centre wing where Steve McCann ducks back to take an easy mark. Good strong mark on that occasion by McCann. He can kick the ball fairly long, so if McDonald wants to lead, he'll so can Glenn Dinning. Now, he's got a round. He's on the left foot going toward McDonald if he can get out, but Jimmy Cracker's waiting for the crumb at the backwards. Doesn't eventuate because the man of which we spoke 
Um, Donald McDonald taking the mark down there, and he's only 30 metres out from goal. You watch this mark as he gets up. Donald McDonald, eyes on the ball, doesn't take his eyes from it, and holds, holds it that one, Peter. He, sometimes it's a two-biter, but that time was only one grab. Well, it wasn't a good effort by the two Geelong players who sort of stood there. They didn't attack the ball, and they allowed McDonald to come in from the side. But as I said, they needed a bit of height down that goal square, and they got it by putting McDonald there. What's he done with the kick? I think he's put it through, and North are coming back hard. Donald McDonald kicking his second goal, North Melbourne 4-4. They are still trailing, though, by four points to Geelong, who have kicked six goals, too. So good kicking for goal by Geelong. You watch this kick by McDonald, putting the boot right behind it. Kick much the same style. He was quite happy with that, too. And he's uh, got the boot right behind it, got good length into the kick and accuracy also. Well, he's a very enthusiastic player, uh, McDonald. He really gives it everything. He does a few foolish things from time to time, which lets his play down. But he has got a lot of ability, and I think he could make a very good full forward. Well, there again, he's only 23 years of age, Peter, so he's got a good future. Now a chance for North Melbourne again. It's been hurried down towards Tracker, as we said, should be oh. doing the over. German chipped in. Gutsy. Good teamwork. That that was a good mark, as Peter McKenna said. A gutsy mark by Peter German. Oh. He's within distance. He's only about 45 metres out from goal. And Peter German is a fairly strong kick. It was a good mark. Back, yeah. back. They're hard to take, oh, Pete. Back, back. I tell you what, he would have had thoughts going through his head. But there's the... Oh, he's the missed it. hooked it. And I think he's missed it. I think you're right, Jackie has. And uh, through for a point north. Melbourne are on 5-5. Geelong are on 6-2. So it's three points the difference at the moment. Terry Bright's having a very good game at fullback on Phil Cracker. He's really put him right out of business uh, so far in this game as we, he brings it towards the half-back area. McCann from behind. Couldn't take the mark fairly. His teammate was there, but it's a Geelong. Is the marker a push, Jack? No, it's a mark that I uh, was saying fairly. Should have tried to knock yeah. the ball away instead of trying to outmark Johnston from the back. Oh, Hand pass is not good football from Johnson to Turner. Turner's caught. He got hit high though and he'll take the free kick Turner tackled too high so at the half back position Michael Turner will now hand pass himself out of trouble other hand pass comes from Hoyles to Hocking Hocking now from the centre in toward the half forward zone and has found this dangerous player in Lindner, Lindner oh. into the full forward zone looking for Ablett or Brown as it's Ablett standing ground can't take the mark though but the umpire said a bit of shepherding against uh, Geelong there and the free kick will go to Stephen McCann. I think it might have been against Gary Ablett. That one as we see uh, pass more receiving from McCann. A further hand pass to David DeWire. He got himself into a bit of trouble but he gets it to Paul Spargo. He's in Spargo trouble. and half back, back <laughs> runs around onto the right foot. Still got the football young Spargo as he brings it to half forward. Yates is there for Geelong. Over the back was Reynoldson. Now it's Phil Cracker. Let's see him as he punches it on. Johnny Hoyles gets a shocking bounce. That was bad luck because Peter German gives it to Jimmy Cracker. Runs into the open goal from 30 metres and that started with a little bit of luck but it ended up with a goal for North Melbourne with Jimmy Cracker. The Hoover Elite 900 has a wool cycle fully approved by the Australian Wool Corporation. That's why Hoover is ahead of the rest. More copying paper. Choosing the best copying paper is a reflex action. These cows provide the most naturally individual drink you could ever enjoy. Milk, full of calcium, protein, vitamins and energy. And we've got a way to bring this 100% natural drink to you. That's just a little more convenient. Live on, live on, live on, the individual milk. And now, here's some good news for car owners. All Mr. Muffler centres will no longer give a three-year guarantee. Instead, when you purchase a muffler from Mr. Muffler, it will be guaranteed for as long as you own your car. That's right, Mr. Muffler will guarantee your new muffler for as long as you own your car. And that's a promise you'll get in writing. A promise you won't get anywhere else. So if your car is sounding a little noisy, remember at Mr. Muffler you'll only pay once. That's the Mr. Muffler guarantee. Now isn't that real peace of mind? He is different, isn't he? Peter Sellers is chance. Stuff with rice pudding between the ears. A simple man leading a simple life until one extraordinary day. On television, Mr. President. You look much smaller. The New York Times spoke of your peculiar brand of optimism. I do not know what it means. Well, I heard he speaks eight languages. 
I can't breathe. I think he's brilliant. Peter Sellers, the motion picture masterpiece. I'm a very good gardener. Being there, your special Wednesday movie at 8.30 on 7. Flanagan against McCann. Oh, McCann. 23 minutes into the second quarter, North Melbourne leading by 16 points. That Peter Johnson, he crashes his way through. He tries to bring it long. He's looking out there for Lindner. Johnny Law gets the bounce of the ball. A beautiful hand pass to Ross Smith. Smith runs towards centre wing and brings it towards Cracker. And this is a oh. Jimmy Cracker. Couldn't take the mark. Now he goes in after it again as Terry Bright made one of his few mistakes. Mick Turner gets it to Darren Morgan. Morgan with a little chip pass towards Damien Drum. Drum debuts and Buse runs down the ground. That's the way they've got to play it. Down towards Brownless. Up he goes. Ablett is out of uh, definitely uh, lacking a bit of match practice as can be seen as uh, easily David DeWire brings it away towards halfback to John Law. Law moves it toward the halfback zone. Big Flanagan comes out to meet it for Geelong. Can't quite get down to that one. It's tapped away. Oh, tackled too high. <laughs> there was Andrew Buse <laughs> and he must take the free kick. Now he wouldn't kick the goal from where he is. He's a long way out for a goal. Is it Andrew Buse or not? Drum. No, it's not. It's Damien Drum. So uh, he's looking for a hand pass. Here he gives it to Big Flanagan. Flanagan had Two thoughts then, he was going to hand pass, decides to have the shot toward goal, but a good mark taken in defence by McCann of North Melbourne. He thought of a hand pass too, can see a teammate and finds one too. Peter German, German going round the flank, down towards Smith it travels. Ross Smith on the half-back flank area on the practice wicket side, kicks down toward Spargo, out in front of Hoyles, a ball on the turf in front of those two players. Spargo did well, he ran out of bounds on purpose, I would think. Turner appealing for the free kick, but the umpire said, boundary throw in. North Melbourne, 8-6-54. Geelong, 6-2-38. On screen there, the two Ruckman, Fairley and Big Flanning. And uh, young David Cameron, you can't see him on screen, but he's warming up. There's a hand pass coming over to Fairley. That was from Peter German down towards half forward. It goes a chance for Spargo. He gives it across to Jimmy Cracker. Cracker might centre this. He does centre it. He brings it back towards his brother Phil. And Phil lines up. Bang! Slams it through. Unselfish play, Jimmy Cracker. And North are well on top at the moment. Yes, Jimmy Cracker, the two Cracker boys there congratulating each other, one saying thank you, and uh, that was his first goal. So, 9-6, what are you saying, Pete? You watch this little kick round the side. It's a good piece of work by Spargo, too. He got it over to uh, Jim Cracker. He'll hook it across there and back into Ward Arsiri, but he didn't get it, and Phil Cracker picked it up and popped it straight through. Damien Drum is off the ground for Geelong, and coming on is the player I mentioned. There he is on screen, Damien. And uh, coming on is David Cameron, a very young player for Geelong. Let's hope he does well. 9-6 play, 6-2. North Melbourne in front. And this guy has got on top in the ruck, in my opinion, McCann. McCann, that's his best position. I've said it all along. And uh, McDonald have pulled forward. And they're trying to keep it that way tonight instead of shuffling them round. Michael Turner can't get it out. The umpire's indicated a bounce in the middle of the MCG. 26 minutes exactly have gone now. The second term you're watching on Sevens Big League and the double header at the MCG Anzac Day 86. McCann again, fairly taps it further afield. A chance for Hocking, can't pick it up, steals after it for North Melbourne. He's not far out from goal. He shoots toward the goal and it's through. It's got there, I think. Yes, it's a goal, kicked by Darren Steele. He looks very happy with himself as he kicks his first goal. And North Melbourne taking a bit of a grip now, Peter. North Melbourne 10-6, 66, Geelong 6-2, 38. Yes, and uh, have a look at this on replay. It's knocked out. A little bit of pace there by Steele. He's able to get him away from Hocking. The long kick came down. Brighton Cracker flew. Look at that. They couldn't get their hands to it. It was Phil Cracker, and he's a delighted <laughs> with that one. He signalled the goal, and uh, there's Darren Steele. And, uh, well, this has been a bad quarter for Geelong. A very good quarter for North Melbourne as we see Flanning and get it down as he kicks it. Uh, Morgan gets it towards half forward. Oh, it's thumped away by the North defence out to Ross Smith. They're really firing now. He kicks it wide. Spargo's been a good player. That's holding the man. It must be because he punched it away cleverly and then was held by the jumper against David O'Keefe and Spargo takes it on centre wing. Shaping up fairly well, isn't he, young Spargo? Doing quite a good job tonight. Eight kicks, Jack. And eight kicks and used them well. Spargo going in toward the forward pocket area, looking for Jimmy Cracker. Didn't find him, though. Stephen Hocking took the mark. Hocking of Geelong in the back pocket position, looking for somewhere to go. No leads. They're all standing. And a 15-metre penalty now gets him mobile. 
He gets a hand pass to Darren Flanagan, who moves it in toward the half-forward zone. Up they fly. It's at the back of the pack now, where the ball comes down to Andrew Dimitriou. Kicked rather blindly there. I thought he could have done a little bit more than that. But now the ball's down on the wing. Jimmy Cracker gets it moving again. Hopkins waiting for the ball to bounce. Shepherding there by Jonas. Allows his teammate Arsiri to come in. But the boundary umpire claimed it. And we'll see a boundary throw in taking place. Nearly 28 minutes into the second term on Sevens Big League. And the boundary throw in taking place on North half forward flank. Flanagan gets it down to Darren Morgan. Morgan on the left boot up towards the centre wing area. It's taken away by Darren Steele. Steele on the left foot kicks Good it pass. wide to Cracker. Oh, oh he dropped that one, Phil Cracker. Right was grabbed over to Jimmy Cracker. Back to Phil. Now here's danger. Phil's running into the open goal. He stabs at the ball. It floats, and I think he's put it through for his second. He has, and the Cracker boys combine a kick. We call National at home. We call Panasonic at the office. What we call National at home, we call Panasonic at the office. What we call National, we call Panasonic. Panasonic office automation. Receive up to $1,100 cash rebate on IBM personal computers. Hmm, better hurry to your authorised IBM dealer. You're not the only one after a good deal. Has the ACT ever beaten Victoria in footy? Well, that's football history. But this week you can back the future right here in the TAB. Because with footy bets, you can bet on any VFL game by nominating the winning points margin. Or you can bet on two games with footy double or four with footy quad. You can even do it from home if you open a TAB telephone account. And if your selection's correct, you're a cash winner. TAB footy bet. It's the game to bet on. This life of luxury can now be yours for a remarkably low $3,700 deposit at Parkmore Gardens, Keysborough. These new fully self-contained two and three bedroom own your own units can be yours today on this low deposit plus our exclusive bank finance package. But hurry, with this fantastic offer, these units will not last. See our representative seven days a week at Cheltenham Road, Keysborough, close to Parkmore Shopping Centre or see the Oliver Hume ad in Saturday's Sun Property Guide. 9.30 Saturday. Why didn't you just tell me? Would it have made any difference? No. Have wheels, will travel. I think I've licked the nurse's lament about long hours on your feet. The woman is trying to show us what she can do. Let her do it. At whose expense? The patients, the staff, mine? Hey, I don't want a roommate. What I need is a shot. And he's killing me. I don't doubt it. What the hell? You work here? I'm a nurse, okay? Yeah, well, I want a regular nurse. I don't want a half-size nurse, especially at these rates. Trapper John, 9.30 Saturday on 7. Bounce to the ball. 11-6 by 6-2. It's been a disastrous quarter for Geelong. There's Damien Christensen. But then again, they are undermanned, as we see a hand pass from Turner coming out the boss boss on the right boot up now. Here's Ablett and Brownless, but they're beaten by Passmore. Is that, that, it's a mark, yes, in the umpire. It wasn't, like... would have been a free kick to well. Passmore. But in this quarter, North Melbourne have moved from 3-3 to 11-6. That's 8-3. They have kicked and Geelong have kicked three goals to the quarter. So it's with Law on the boundary line, tapping the ball in front of him. And a boundary throne will take place in front of the members' stands here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Anzac Day 86 double header in progress now. North Melbourne leading Geelong 72 to 38 in the second term, nearly 29 and a half, nearly 30 minutes in. Geelong a chance to get a goal from off their half forward line if they can get out of this pack of players, but they can't. North Melbourne's German couldn't make contact, been picked up by the busy little last series, giving the ball out now to German who moves it towards Crackers. They're both there, the Cracker boys. One must have said leave it because it's on the turf. Bright gets away this time with it. He can't make contact. Pinched by Jimmy Cracker, hooks it in toward the forward pocket. He's got eyes in the back of his head. It's a fairly into Phil Cracker, into the skull square, and Donald McDonald puts it straight through for North Melbourne's 12th goal and his personal three. So a great piece of football by the North Melbourne forwards. They combined very well. Sorry, it's Donald McDonald's fourth goal. Yes, but have a, have a look at this for teamwork. This is beautiful play. Jimmy Cracker fairly unselfishly gave it to Phil Cracker. Unselfish again over to McDonald. That is real team football by North Melbourne. They brought it right into the goal span. There's Donald. He's absolutely delighted. There's, now look at him yelling out because kick a few goals, it gives you 
your chest goes out an extra two inches, I reckon, Jack. Well, mine would have to. He's pumped right up, though, Donald McDonald. He's only 23 years of age, but he's got a great future. There's Big Fanny, and so is he. Two Ruckman face each other across that circle. McCann. Got the tap, didn't go very far. Picked up by Christensen, it was smothered. Forced out toward Glenn Denning and Cleve. Cleve tried to do the shepherding for Turner, which was partially successful. Turner gets, a, uh, gets rid of it. Smith comes in for North Melbourne. Picked up by Buse. Buse on the left foot, shoots in a beautiful pass off the boundary <laughs> line and has found Billy Brown. But he's a long way out, but don't ride him off because he can kick. Tell you what, he kicks the ball a country mile. Let's have a look at this kick as he, so he gives it that normal thump. Oh, look at that. It's a yes. long kick. It's a, a goal. beautiful long kick. It's a goal from the boundary. What a goal for Brownless for his second. Yes, North Melbourne now, after kicking nine goals, three in this second term, have taken the lead a, a long way away from Geelong. You watch this kick by Brownless as he put the leather on its way when he lets it go. Look at that travel off the boot. Right through the centre, a beautiful goal. North 12-6, Geelong 7-2 on seven's big league. And I think if any kid was watching how to kick a football, if you wanted to model yourself on someone, Brownless is a perfect kick. Whereas if you watch Peter Johnston at the other end, I think you'd, you'd uh, shudder every time he went to kick it because of his uh, action. As well, one shows how to do it, the other one shows how not to do it. Please. Right, that's exactly what I was trying to say, but I was trying to be kind, Jack. Oh, all right. At the centre bounce once again, the ball's only a few metres on North Melbourne side. McCann goes for it, but the siren sounds half-time in the doveheader of the MCG. North Melbourne, 12 6 78, Geelong 7-2, 44 on 7, big lead. In North Melbourne leading by 34 points at half time, an excellent second quarter in which they kicked nine goals, three to four goals. They came away again in the final term, adding a further six goals, three to Geelong's two goals, two. Good win by North Melbourne, victorious by 62 points. Checking the stats, North Melbourne well on top in the kicks department. They had 61 more. They had 11 more handballs, 13 more shots at goals, four more marks. The goal kickers for North Melbourne, first of all, and Spargo, he finished up with five. He was their major contributor. Cracker got four, that's Phil Cracker, and McDonald got four for Geelong. Lindner finished up with four goals and Ablett three, but some bad news for Geelong. Lead by six points in what's been an absorbing struggle for three quarters. No one able to break clear. A late whistle call, an infringement out of the centre. It will go the way of Footscray and Andrew Purser. Can they get up, Robert? Footscray? I think they can, Sandy. Purser, a big punt. Down towards half forward. Beasley and Sewell. Tap clear. Coming to meet at Beers. Steadies on the left foot. Wide towards the wing. Kellett is there. Needs support. Goes over the top. Hawkins, who spent the entire day out there on that wing, hasn't come across the member's side once. And we'll see a bounce. The bounce will take place right alongside the point of the centre square. Footscray side of the centre. First up, it's a tap. Tony Shaw takes it. Towards half forward. Baxter, Dixon at the back. Dixon gets the hand pass to Beers. Beers now hand passes back to Dixon. Coming out towards the boundary line. Can he keep it in play? He does. Gets boot to ball. Swings it forward. Rance up high. Takes a nice mark for Footscray. Murray Rance. Midway between back pocket and half back flank. A nice kick from Rance. Sees the ball at about centre wing. Purser has the ball tapped away. Rod McPherson playing a good game for Footscray. Puts it towards half forward. Petraglia in the front position. Taps the ball down. Goes after it. Sewell's there as well. Over the boundary line it goes. And the throw will take place. Half forward flank for Footscray. On the throw in. Number 15 fellows. Number 2 Sewell. Over the back comes Morwood. Hawkins came through. Couldn't take possession. Petraglia first on the scene. Hooks the ball forward. Is it over the line on the full? Yes, it is. And the kick will be taken by Collingwood. Gordon Sumner. Sumner between the back pocket and the half-back flank. Coming pretty dark on that outer side. Fisted down. Wallace tried to use the body. Williams too slow. Caught on that occasion. So too Abernethy. Now an opportunity for Tony Shaw. Williams again. He's got up on his feet. Goes forward. Taylor and Kennedy. Taylor, Kennedy, Shaw, the quick handball, Beers, a hurried kick in towards the pocket. Gary Shaw is going to be first to it. Can he swing round on his right foot? He hooks, but it's not enough. One point over. 
Well, every point counts. Because it's now one goal, one, the margin. No, Rick, right to left foot back. Rick Kennedy. To the outer side, that's what they've been doing all day, but that's a beautiful talk. Doug Hawkins gave the most massive push. <laughs> and look at Doug. I plead innocent, Your Honour. <laughs> 15 metres carrying on like that, Sandy. <laughs> he has too. And that's dangerous. Beers. It's a shocking kick into the half forward. In fact, it wasn't Beers. I think it might have been Gafer. Out towards the wing now. Kerrison. Neville Shaw. Kerrison's gone to ground. We kick to Preston. Andy Preston at centre wing. Shane Kerrison up. Play on is the call. Steve McPherson gets his kick down towards Beasley. I think Phillips just slipped over there, Sandy. He's had trouble with his footing on a number of times today. I've noticed a couple of times even when he's on the mark. Well, he's we've, slipped. we've witnessed Simon Beasley with some very pressure kicks and no more than this one, Sandy. Here's a chance to bring them within one point. Five metres out, almost directly in front, and as Bob said, this is a pressure kick. Has kicked two. A stammering approach. The drop punt leaves his boot. And I tell you what, he's handled the pressure beautifully because his goal is one point the difference. Simon Beasley kicking his third goal. Lovely piece of play as Preston got it out to Steve McPherson and a beautiful kick from McPherson right under the chest of Simon Beasley. So one point the margin in favour of Collingwood. Approaching the five minute mark of the final turn. You're watching Seven's Big League as Fellows completes, competes against Persa. Tapped back by Smith, taken by Fellows. The short kick, an awkward one for Kellett but he's able to tap it down. Baxter forced it through, Beers picks it up, Dixon's there for Collingwood. The left foot kick down towards half forward, Rance couldn't get to it, it runs past both Kennedy, Rance is there along with Taylor, Kennedy trying to pick the ball up, taps it forward, now picks it up, good play by Kennedy as he drives it towards centre wing, Fellows comes across, too tall for Petraglia and takes a nice mark. So Wes Fellows at centre wing, straight on to Shane Morwood who goes with a wobbly punt down towards a poor kick. Straight to Rod McPherson. He repels the attack once again. Back towards Hawkins and Gafer. Hawkins can't take it. To ground. Gafer comes away, but his kick is under pressure, and he goes out of bounds on the full at centre wing. He's worked hard against Hawkins, though, Gafer. Since no word he half time. has. Yep. Collingwood leading by one point. Six minutes play. Final term in a low-scoring, but very intense, important encounter. Rance. Receiving across the centre, balks nicely. Up towards Beasley and Phillips. Plenty of hanging on. McGuinness waits down. Did he cop one in the back? No, said the umpire, and a bounce will take place. Wobbling off from the ground looks like Bruce Abernethy, and going back on is Ron McKeon. And looking at Abernethy, he looks in a spot of bother. Here's the bounce. Burgess over the top. Wallace dropped it. First to pick it up, Sumner, but his kick was well smothered by Hardy, who breaks the tackle, he's clear, comes out wide to the flank, who's he got? McPherson's the target, Burgess is there with him, McLean receives the hand pass from Royal, steadies, fires in towards goal, Beasley and Phillips, no mark taken, McGinnis at the back, missed it, he, I think it might have gone over, I think he might have got his boot to it, but I think it had gone across the line. It's bad luck for McGuinness. He was in the right spot, but couldn't quite uh, get boot to ball. 59 points apiece. 7-17 to 8-11 as Phillips comes to the members' side of the ground. Fellows coming across a nice mark. Now it's called play on by the umpire. Royal picks it up. A hand pass to McQueen. A long one out wide. Kellett takes it. He's hooked it. One point, but puts Gray in front. At one point by Kellett is the margin that puts Gray are in front. Keller coming right down from half back. 60 to 59. Phillips, a lovely kick. 
Purser and Sewell almost collide. Williams gets one in the back and he'll drive the ball forward for Collingwood. Collingwood Mark about Williams. to make another change too, Bobby. Shane Kerrison who left the ground after copping one in the face about to come back on. Over centre wing, push. Go the way of Collingwood, Ronnie McKeon who spent considerable time on the interchange to take the kick. True centre wing spot. Tumbles a punt up towards half forward. Hawking. Straight down the throat of Murray Rance. Rance will clear. Out in front of Baxter. Gets a favourable bounce. Rod McPherson saying over to me. But be quick. Greg Smith's hot on his heels. He gets his kick. Down towards half forward. Only see Turner take a fine mark. Ball to ground once. Steadies. Swings along in towards half.